I'm live. All right. Man, you're fast. You already have it on your Twitter. Is that what you're doing right now? <laughs> on Twitter? No. <clears throat> on Twitter? No. I see it. Yeah. On your uh, on your feed. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, maybe. Oh, that was ten hours ago. I thought that was man. That was your fast. I just did. <laughs> <laughs> Not that good. Uh, okay. <laughs> so let me put it on. Uh, so it's on Facebook. Yeah. And this is uh, something. Let me. Uh, so, I'm gonna turn that down. Watch it on my other screen so I could see if there's any. Uh, oh, maybe. Oh, that was 10 hours Tweets, no, 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 it's gonna no, 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 I mean, I wonder if I. Last night we watched um, The Godfather. What'd you watch? The Godfather. Oh, the original. Yeah. First one. As requested by Ella. She, <laughs> she wanted to watch The Godfather. <laughs> She's like, it's on my bucket list. I haven't seen it. I've been wanting to see it. She got a bucket list. Even two summers ago. Actually, it still holds up. Ella said, um, "Oh, this is this is this one scene that was this nudity. I forgot about that, so we fast forwarded that one. But um, at the end, she can't wait to watch the second one. And she said, "See, they can make a great movie without cussing." Yeah, you'd never want to portray criminals with dirty mouths. I know. Well, they said the thing one bad word, but it's in Italian. <laughs> so, so I guess that one is okay. They can have such clean language as criminals, mafia. Mm -hmm. hey, they don't cuss. They're family people. Okay. All right. Let me. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, we're live. We're live. We're, we're in the alive. Uh, okay. All right. So I'm going to start just warming up and start growing some jungly. You get the head start. Yeah. I'm going to go on. You posted okay. your uh, your link on Facebook. Yeah. Oh, uh, did you see it? Um, I'm gonna, I, huh? There it is. Okay, she so got it. Yep, oh, man. it's getting cool. All right, all right. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning <clears throat> to our watching. Good morning. Good, good morning to 11 people. <laughs> uh, well. All right. All right. Start drawing pictures. Get to work. Oh. All right. 
So what are we gonna do today? Uh, um, <clears throat> all right. Well, I'm just gonna share how I start my files. Some people are asking um, what image or the size, image size. Um, well, for me, I always start with, I mean, the least size for me would be this. I would also not smaller, if it's, if it's a decent size artwork, um, it's always 5,000 by, you know, around 3,000 pixels. Um, how, what size do you always work on that? Well, <clears throat> always start a new file. Why don't we start with U.S. paper, uh, mm -hmm. usually legal. It's like an eight and a half by 14 at 300 DPI. I think it's around two to 3,000 pixels, but then oh, I'll, I'll yeah. always expand it from there. Yeah. I'm never totally uh, consistent, to be honest. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. It's interesting. They call it the U.S. paper. It's the best kind US paper yeah I don't know yeah I use tabloid on my end actually on my I mean it, yeah, it, yeah. It, <clears throat> I use tabloid <laughs> the reason why I just got used to it so if I if I was in the studio I would print and um, you know, from the studio so it's it's already set up to be printed uh, Brian Wayne. Yeah. I'm going to go vertical this time. Uh, let me copy my... If people want my stream as well. I think yours looks better, though. We still got to get this down. We're not... <clears throat> <clears throat> there. Co op two. Co op two. Draw some trees. I don't even know what I'm going to draw today, but he said some gorillas. Some. Going jungly. <clears throat> jungly stuff. It's interesting last week when you were painting and I had to catch up. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> kind of really tested my, you know, my skills that I had to catch up with. So I had to paint right away. Yeah. And, uh, and normally I don't do that. But it was... Uh, I had a good time last time. It was. It was fun. Yep. Um, right. I've got some the, reference. Oh. <clears throat> Is your Is your aid going to do something, or do you have anything in mind, or just? I think I'm going to do some kind of gorilla-ish creature. Cool. Kind of in my mind. So I'm going to make a jungle-ish picture too. <laughs> that gives us some leeway. If you put a little ish at the end of anything you say, it means you don't have to commit to it. <clears throat> Safe. Oh man. Like Can get rid of this gold. No, they've been saying that it's uh because it is flu season and there's COVID things going around, it's just hard to tell. <laughs> do I got COVID or do I just have the flu? Did you work for Hanna-Barbera? 
when you first started working? <clears throat> I did. I, uh, actually, I met Bill Hanna. He was already old at the time. And you he named your daughter after him? Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> I was so inspired. <laughs> I love their cartoons. I uh, named my daughter Hannah. Yeah. I just added an H at the end of Hannah just to so people wouldn't know that I based it from him. Now he came over to the studio. I mean, that was my first time. I was, uh, was really young at the time. Right after school, um, you know, I wasn't really inspired to to do anything but when i learned about the studio man i said you know that's something that i really wanted to do you know in my mind oh man just to <clears throat> just to draw and, and and get paid for it um and that's the best thing but in a way um yeah i mean that's that's where i started um Put a thing up on. Did you post on Instagram that we're live? Uh, no, not on Instagram. Me neither. I'll just post it. Oh, well. That's all right. I guess it is what it is. Trying to figure out what we got in here. The... 16 people watching, four watching. All right. All right. It's a little earlier. We got the early birds. Oh. Man, you were able to type at the same time you draw. And you're like the uh you're like the Renaissance man. Type and draw. <laughs> type and draw. <laughs> <clears throat> wow. I saw you you responded to Brian online. Yeah. Well when I was first getting in there kind of behind me so I'm not going to be able to keep my eye on it. I think with, with all this stuff running at the moment my computer has a slight lag on my end. Uh, yeah, you know this setup um, is a little better for me when you have it. I have uh, Zoom dedicated to that one one uh, my shared screen monitor it is a little smoother because i'm not doing both video and uh screen full screen capture mm -hmm. at the same time okay you know what let me uh all right so i'm gonna start <laughs> How'd you start back share with everyone? You were working, you work for a game company, right? When you, when you started? Yeah. When I, uh, first started, my first real art job was Interplay. Mm -hmm. I was a concept artist. That was back in 95 ish. Mm -hmm. 95 ish um, and but before that I had a one art job it was at a t-shirt company it was mm. this guy who did um, Christian t-shirts and uh, I won't mention his name or the company or anything anyway it wasn't the best experience it was the best or it wasn't the best? It, was, it wasn't. <laughs> he didn't just do All Christian right. t-shirts. He also did uh, these coffee coasters for a strip bar in L.A. Wow, what a combination. <laughs> they had man. like these, you know, those mud flap girls, you know, on a truck uh -huh. mud flap. And I remember him saying, hey, can you clean up this art? And I looked at it like, what is this? Yeah, just clean that up. Ugh. I had to get out of there. How long did you work there? 
Oh, it wasn't too long. And then I think I went to work for Starbucks. Uh, and then I applied at, um, at Interplay. I remember getting an interview, <clears throat> uh, meeting with the art director. He gave me an art test, like a, a two-page written art test, which I've never uh -huh. had before. <laughs> like, ask questions. <laughs> What's two-point perspective? Three-point perspective? Like, it was an actual test. And then uh, he sat me down at a computer with this program called D-Paint. And uh, yeah. it, it was a pixel program. And mm -hmm. uh, I had no idea what I was doing. And uh, I tried to figure it out. Couldn't. And I didn't get the job. <laughs> 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 and then a year later, I had... Um, this is a long story, but you can zone That's out okay. if you want. You can just zone cool. right out. But um, I was working at a video game store with mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine was managing it. And this guy, probably in his 60s, came in mm -hmm. wearing a turtleneck, black turtleneck, and older <laughs> guy. And he's looking around at the game. He just he did not fit in at all. Um, mm -hmm. but he's looking around like... Oh, tell me about these games. And what's a good game? And he's like, "Do you think you could make a good game?" I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> what a question! Like, do, you, do you think you could design one of these or something like that? Like, yeah. Uh -huh. I said, well, I'm trying to put together a little dream team, you know. A and, dream uh, team. Yeah, uh, this was just crazy. You'd never do this, right? But um, uh -huh. uh, so I ended up meeting with this guy, and uh, like a. 10th floor of this building and uh, signed an NDA and uh, this is like, you know, I'm 19, I think, 18 mm -hmm. or 19. Uh, I gotta pick up the pace here. Um, and so he, um, he shows me these three, like I signed an NDA and then he shows me these three ideas, but they look like they were done on a, uh, like Windows Paint program, you know, with a mouse. Mm -hmm. It was like right. Surfer Dude, Sam Blade, Rollerblader, and then some other thing. I forgot what the other one was, but they were like real, real simple ideas. And he, uh, um, <laughs> so I, I ended up taking one of those. We take Sam Blade, and I, I mm -hmm. created this uh, character out of him. Did the art and then his buddy <clears throat> all these things and um so the deal was to create a first level of this game a full design uh and i got my buddies to help for i think it was 1500 bucks mm -hmm. was the deal and so i um i asked this i met a uh the assistant art director at interplay um he's a really nice guy and so i called him up and said hey i've got this opportunity you know to do this game and um is 1500 dollars is that a good deal and he's like well vance uh just to give you some perspective i just signed a a kind of a similar deal with an outside developer for mm -hmm. three hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> wow. they're going to design a first level of the game you know, back then it's right. Super Nintendo, so the first level of the game is basically yeah. the game. <laughs> You're just going to do that a hundred times after. And mm -hmm. uh, he, um, yeah, so that whole deal just went, we kind of backed out of it. I remember going to the meeting again on the 10th floor. I went to a different floor, and before I even gotten paid or anything, my artwork was on an entire wall. They had it. <laughs> printed out, like put on the wall like like they're designing a whole new studio right <clears throat> and um i remember like what the heck you know like uh i haven't even got any money and they're already using this thing and then the guy said well listen we're not really interested in your friends we're just kind of interested in you you know would you be interested in coming uh, on board ends up they were like a japanese uh uh gambling company they made like mm -hmm. um a little better they made gambling games for uh airlines 
So I guess you could gamble on your yeah. way while you're on your flight. So they'd never really done any software development, like video game stuff. They just done gambling games. Mm -hmm. Anyway, back out of that, but after talking to this guy from Interplay, he's like, well, listen, we got a new position here. If you're interested, uh, we're, we're trying out a new position called concept artist. We've never really done it before. Would you be interested in something like that? And I'm like, yeah. So that's how I got into games. Got my first job as concept artist. Interplay. Very cool. Nine bucks an hour. That's cool. Don't complain, kids. You know. Yeah, I was so psyched though. Gosh, get paid to draw pictures. It was just like, I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. Yeah, that was that was same thing for me. I mean, when I the first time I got paid just to do whatever we're doing, and uh, man, I said that was it was so great. I mean, the the feeling of that, you know. I remember when. Um, I was working, um, I tried to work, you know, other jobs, but um, I was always happy. I mean, I never took art in school, so everything for me was just more like a hobby. And, um, but, man, when I learned about it, that, oh, there's, there's business called animation, and, um, first job when I got hired um, oh actually I was working for a construction company and I was so bored and uh, there's I, I left that company and I worked as a as an artist at a greeting card local greeting card company and it was it was so cheap that I can't even remember how much was it but I had uh, I remember I was so happy just to get paid you know, doing what I love to do um but the owner of that local greeting card company in manila to take advantage of me in a way uh he would uh he would ask me to do some stuff for his house <laughs> he would design something can you design uh the wall of my bedroom you know this is in, in my mind man as long as you're paying me i'm totally cool with it but i'm just being paid i think by the hour i can remember my, my regular pay but yeah. <laughs> I think well, most of the stuff that he's asking me to do lately has been for his house. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, then I got hired, yeah, at Hanna-Barbera. Um, see, at the time, I mean, in Manila, we never had any animation or any kind of those programs. So uh, I never knew anything about animation all I, I i was just looking on on encyclopedia so how do they actually do animation so i would look at those and um so i just learned it on the fly on my own but when i got hired they would send um some guys over from la uh from hanna barbera in in la and they would you know uh, give us some training so that was actually good. I guess what <laughs> these guys learned for four years at Cal Arts or Art Center, they're dumping it to us in three months. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, uh, I wouldn't say it was a cheap labor. Actually, we were paid good in, in Philippine standard at the time. It was actually good pay. Um, of course, it's cheaper than the U.S. standard. Uh, but yeah, being in Manila, um, it, it was it was it was more than decent for us. So I enjoyed it a lot. You know, and in most of the studios in the U.S., they would go on hiatus over the holidays, over Christmas, and. Um, but in the Philippines, what they would do, since I guess we're cheaper, they would even have us go on vacation, uh, paid vacation in Christmas. So because of that, I enjoyed it. I said, oh, wow, you know what? That would be a great job. You know, we go on Christmas break for two weeks and, and we're paid. I said, these Americans are so nice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's how I started. Um, you know, until I, then I came here in the U.S. It's it, again, it's it's because of 
people that I work with um, in in Hanna Barbera. Actually, I move I move on to um, to Marvel. They started another studio, a new studio in Manila also, and I moved there. And um, that's that's the time when I decided to move to the U.S. There's some guys that I work with from L.A. Um, and they they keep on telling me, man, you 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 can enjoy LA. You know, you should go there. You should go there. So I tried. I applied in thirty different studios, big and small. I grab an animation magazine, just hired on any studio that I find uh, found on the animation magazine that has addresses. Um, in the magazine, and I just sent my application letters, and I remember there's 30 of them that I sent it to. Yeah, and uh, one of them bit the bait, <laughs> <laughs> and I moved to Glendale, from Manila to Glendale. Then I live in Burbank for a year. <laughs> Yeah. Then I uh, <clears throat> I took some summer classes at a trade school um, in in Burbank, and um, yeah, and and my instructors were Disney guys. And so they asked some coaching on how to build a new portfolio, you know, geared towards feature animation. And but at the same time, I was working on daytime. I was taking classes nighttime, and Bing was pregnant with our second baby. So it was it was a it was a challenging time, but but it was also a uh, you know it was fun. It was it was those difficult times in life. We were in a one-bedroom apartment in, in Burbank. Our furniture were given to us by her aunt, who lives in San Diego. And uh, so we have like just a couch, a TV, and we didn't have a bedroom set. So Bing was pregnant, and she was laying down on a foot on, on the floor. That was our first year in LA. But it was a uh, it's fun, yeah. It's like we're in America, <laughs> the land of milk and honey. Awesome, awesome. Yep. All right. All right. All looking right, man. Good. Looking good. I'm looking at your gorilla, so I'm trying to match it with my jungles. Jungle stuff. Man, chat room is so quiet, which is good. <laughs> now, if you guys have any questions at all, you guys are free to ask. Uh, I guess we're so early to the events that. Um, yeah. Like many people are online. I thought there might be more when we were yeah. probably early. advertised a little better, huh? I think we just I know, it's okay. A little a little more lackluster, but what can you do? I think at least I don't know. I don't watch a lot of live streams. I watch a lot of playbacks, you know, I'll go on YouTube and Mm -hmm. They might live stream it, but I'll watch the playback. So I don't know. Yeah. Fine. Saturday morning. People. I know. Sleep. Uh, well, thanks for doing this with me, Benz. Well, it's fun. At least it's testing it out. Seeing how uh, all this broadcasting stuff works, it's kind of fun. It's, it's not as um, it's, it, it wasn't as as nerve wracking as last week. Yeah, I guess we got it up. Still not ideal. I mean, your stream looks good. 
Uh, it is a little pixely though when I'm looking at it full screen. Like we got to oh, see streams that are so nice, you know, like razor yeah. sharp. Oh, gotta get that. Maybe down. in the last, uh, on, the, on the last, sorry, uh, next week or next next time, not next week, but next time I uh, will do this again. Um, may have, I may have to um, adjust the uh, the resolution on the streaming. Um, yeah, I'll try and look that stuff up. I think it depends on your hardware too, like what, what uh, hardware you're going to stream from. Right. Uh, I mean, I just got, it's the setting. It's the, um, the default setting on yeah. OBS. Yeah. Once I yeah. put it on YouTube, that's, that's the size that, um, it gave me. So, and I check on it. I mean, that's the normal proportion for a YouTube video. So I guess that's the one, but I'm sure there's a way to pick that if you do it. So that's 2k, maybe do it for it. The downside of it, though, is not everybody can stream perfectly well. Uh, well, they need depending to. Depending on... Huh? They need to. That's not an option. You need to upgrade your internet. <laughs> yeah. They need to. <laughs> Oh, so there's a um, uh, this guy I know, Patrick Astilla. Astilla, he's from uh, he's one of our he's from De La Salle University. He's one of our partners for Icon Manila. Uh, he mm -hmm. heads up their animation uh, department, and uh, uh, he said no questions. Just want to say thanks, uh, Patrick. It's good to have. You. Um, Philippa, she was asking, uh, did you have a theme already before the stream or you just started making up what to draw on the spot? You want to answer that, Vance? Yeah, I think we ch chatted real quickly last night when we were trying to test this out. I think you mentioned jungle. So I thought, oh, maybe a gorilla guy. I think I'm going to be doing some creatures here for the next few streams. Uh, I think I'll try to do it once a week or so. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. going to be doing a creature class at uh, Brainstorm. That'll be mm -hmm. online. <clears throat> yeah. I'll put the link in the chat once I get to a good spot here. But um, we're going to do a five-week Fantastic Beasts and how to draw them uh, mm -hmm. boot camp. So that should be fun. I think trying to do more mystical beasts, more mythological uh, that kind of thing. So, right. Uh, Very so cool. It's been on my mind. Do creatures, and I made that little sticker, and I thought, oh, that's cool. It'd be kind of cool to have a collection of creature stickers, different dragons, mm -hmm. and cool monsters like that. So yeah. It's fun. So, that was about all the preparation I did. I thought, oh, I'll look at some gorillas or something. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that answered the question, Philippa. We didn't really land. So it, it's, uh, I think it's better to keep it loose, just an idea. So it would um, just give us a direction. But for the most part, it's just, you know, just want to have fun drawing, basically. Um, but, yeah, we kind of just give us a little bit of an idea what to draw next, you know. And I got a question here on my on my feed from Naomi. Hello, my name is Naomi. Yes, better advertising, guys. LOL. People will enjoy it during the staying at home. How has the shelter in home affected creativity, if at all? How has it affected your creativity? Oh, working from home? Is that what she's asking? Yeah, just this whole thing, I guess. Yeah. The um, whole mess. Go for it. Answer that. 
Oh, <laughs> you're waiting for my answer. Asking, I was waiting for I'm yours. I'm asking you. <laughs> it didn't affect me at all because I've been working from home uh, for so many years now. Um, and uh, I got used to it. So when they, uh, you know, when they decide that, um, when they decided that people should start working from home, um, it never really changed that much for me, right? And I think it's the same with you, right? But I mean, it, it's not much of a change. No, not logistically at all. I mean, it's the same mm -hmm. deal. I get up, get my morning cup of coffee from Aug yep. Augie's Roastery, which I make here at home, but I got their beans and they're really good. And then, uh, yeah, have my little maybe cereal or simple breakfast and then get, get to work. Uh, but yeah, it is affecting though. I mean, the last couple of jobs here uh, have gone down for me earlier than anticipated. Uh, so yeah. it's, uh, I think it's got a domino effect. So mm -hmm. uh, not that they can't do pre-production right now, like on shows. It's just that pre-production yeah. is sort of predicated on that there's going to be a production, right? Mm -hmm. If production's not happening, right. then you don't need to do pre-production right now. You don't need to do that, you know. So everything, the dominoes start falling. Mm. That's been the only drag that's been happening the last, maybe the last month. I was on a job earlier in the month. That went down kind of abruptly. Then I was on a recent mm. one that it also went down. So it just means I got to hustle more than usual. But that's, that's right. kind of normal too. There's just those times, right? Job... Mm. ends kind of abruptly and you've got to start cold calling people and hey what's going on is there a project you guys need help yeah we'll work for food so that's that might be a effect. good thing that might be a good <clears throat> thing to uh I don't know if, that's any, if there's no other questions so that might be a good one since you you you've been working freelance uh i mean pretty much most of your uh, career right so how's that um what's the main thing you have to uh keep doing in order to survive and to be successful with it based off from your experience um yeah i mean just based off from your experience what would you say would be best um uh, you know the best a person or an artist has to keep in mind or keep doing in order for them to survive um, freelancing? Well, I think you got to be uh, you got to be kind of like, nimble, I guess. You got to be willing to sort of stop in your tracks and do something else quickly. Mm -hmm. So it was hard. It was difficult at the beginning to get into freelance it doesn't yeah. require you i guess having a network of people that you can tap into mm -hmm. I think it finally started happening when maybe i had three or four clients that were sort of kind of would sort of cycle you know i was doing work mm -hmm. for wizards of the coast in yeah. the beginning of my career and then another company a different company called whiz kids uh they did like a card game tabletop mm -hmm. games uh, and then maybe another one and then when one would drop off i'd get an email from the other one and it was it was tough though at the beginning i'd have to say it took a couple years for it to really um really sort of have some equilibrium you know mm -hmm. it just uh took a while to balance out home you know yeah uh kids and family and uh, how do you divide up time properly and um it did take a lot of time to do but now it's i wouldn't i wouldn't want it any other way i love it yeah yeah for me too i mean i'm working in the studio that's been my life for so many years that's how i think i'm a I was younger, more of a, a person way, and I just want to have, uh, I don't like the hustle, um, you know, so I just want to settle. <laughs> um, so instead of me trying to 
um, hustle job. I'd rather be in the studio um, and, you know, just doing day to day um, stuff. So that was my life for um, for a period of time, uh, especially you know, most of my the, most of my time, you know, in, in you know, carry in, in, in animation. Um, but uh, I think when when um, you know, with technology and opportunities, actually, are, I mean, it's still very competitive. But I see that oh, there's so much stuff going on out there. Uh, am I missing, um, or am I just um, settling? And I, I always find that um, you know, working in animation is cool. Um, but I guess I think my as as an artist, my default is it's more like realism. You know, I'm not much of a um, don't really. Growing up as an artist, I don't really do much uh, stylized drawings. If you could, if I could say it that way, um, I always draw more more realism, and uh, it just so happened that that's the opportunity that opened up for me is animation for me to draw and get paid. So I grab it. I mean, I'm not. I don't complain, and I enjoyed it a lot. But at the same time, I think my default as an artist was always has always been you know doing more um realistic stuff so after doing animation for some time i realized hey, i want to do some games and um yeah there's some game companies they started you know offered um me to oh can you do freelance for this game and that game um and I said, oh, you know what? Why not? You know, so so I tried it, and I enjoyed it because I mean, I've been drawing princesses and castles, and and, <laughs> and I mean, I stylized stuff um, that geared toward old old ages. Then, uh, when I had an opportunity to do some uh, man, some Vikings and warriors and swords, and uh, you know, a little bit more. Uh, realistic stuff i said you know maybe i should do some more freelance then then that's the time that you know i started building up my portfolio uh, for that kind of genre more like on the game stuff and um yeah and i enjoyed it a lot i i would i wouldn't you know regret that time that i spent to um uh, changing or, or or how do you say that kind of steered my way uh, in, a, in, a, in a slightly different direction. Um, so anyway, I, that's... Um, then I started doing... That's why I started working from home and don't want to go... I don't want to... I didn't want to accept any more uh, production leadership, you know, like being an actor. I always aspire... I was younger when I was um, working um, inside the studio. I don't want to be a director. I don't want to be any of those high position jobs. I always wanted to be just a production designer or an art director, and, and I'm cool with that. Um, and uh, I mean, Sony actually gave me that opportunity when I was working for Sony Animation. And um, but sadly, you know, just like the nature of the beast, the nature of our industry things sometimes won't get made. So <laughs> I think I have a, a mole somewhere that every time I art, they gave me something to art direct, uh, the movie never got made. <laughs> <clears throat> that was a good chunk of my career at Interplay. I think. Really? Yeah, a good three and a half. Well, no, most of my career there. I did one game, uh -huh. which was called Red Asphalt. Which was uh -huh. like a, a PS2. I mean, that, that sounds like a cool, cool, Red cool asphalt. title. It was first called yeah. uh, Rock and Roll Racing Part Two, but then I guess they couldn't. <laughs> they they didn't want to call like it that, that anymore. <laughs> uh, it was a Super Nintendo game. It was actually the first game was cool. Rock and Roll Racing was fun. But oh really? We were doing the sequel, and it just uh, 
We worked on it for about three and a half years, three years, mm -hmm. maybe a little longer. I don't know. Felt long. That finally got out the door, but boy, we did not know what we were doing. We're just trying to figure <laughs> it out as we went. And then, um, yeah, uh, that's good. Um, and then I worked on another project, which was going to be Stone Keep 2. Yeah, all these sequels. And then that just never saw the light of day. That was kind of... Uh, what was the title? Stone Keep 2. Okay. Um, but it just never uh, never, never made it. Mm. And then that turned into another project, a and d, d project. And that one was actually going pretty good. And then the company got bought by another company, and because of a legal dispute, we lost mm. the D and D license. So they're like, "Oh yeah, so we're not doing D and D anymore." What? <laughs> like that's what we've been working on in the last few years, you know? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? So that went down, and then everybody started quitting, and whole company went belly up. So yeah, that was uh. That was a good chunk of my experience, though. It was just stuff that weren't wasn't seeing the light of day. A lot yeah. of good portfolio pieces. Oh yeah, I mean, it, I mean, when when something never get made, I mean, that's it, it boils down to to that basically, you know. So this they would go to the portfolio if they gonna allow some. There's some studios they won't allow us, you know they. But we didn't never get made, then they wouldn't even allow us to to use those, even though they never got made. Which I, I don't see the the purpose other than maybe they want to uh, restart it, maybe later on. But mm -hmm. at least for the most part, I mean, you spend like what? I mean, the the thing for me, the biggest amount of time that I spent on the project, then to find out that it wasn't gonna get made was uh two years i was on on and off and i enjoyed it a lot um it was a samurai project which is you know you guys know that i love samurai so that was a dream job for me and um so anyway i, I worked on it on and off for some time um until they shelved it and and I think when when that one got shelved, that's the time that I started uh, rethinking my priorities. And I said, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to play this kind of game. When you know, I've been wanting to have this position, and it's just a position. And um, I realized, and at the time, I mean, working from home is already some it's an option. I mean, to for some artists, and. Um, and I, I realized, you know what, if, if, and I was, you know, I'm in my mind too, I mean, I'm getting older and uh, I don't have anything get, you know, nothing is getting made. And um, I'd rather have the credits as a vis dev than try to get a position and I'm only going to get what? Uh, oh, they get to do uh one or two in 15 years <laughs> it's just because everything does never get made so it's uh I, I decided and i'll be happy i said you know just working from home without traveling what so so yeah so i started just doing freelance and, and working from home and i said no no more no more driving for me no more um um, no more position, no more headaches, um, and no more, in a way, no more frustrations. Because of, of being a vis dev, I get to do a lot of projects. I mean, and whether they cancel it or not, I, I still have a lot of drawings, <laughs> you know, to this that I enjoyed, right? Um, yeah. So, so that that's that's why that made me. It it, it became a you know it boils down to what it, what was my priority. Um, and, and my priority was not to have a position. Um, it, it didn't matter to me anymore uh, whether I'm an art director or this dev. Uh, I have nothing to prove. I, I felt like I have nothing to prove anymore. 
um, I think it I proven myself to those um, I build up enough I guess connections and friends already and and, and in a way also thankfully you know with reputation uh, I think that's those are the things that that matters when you work in the industry is you know you just have to prove yourself and build good relationships and be as professional as you could and and always do the best in whatever you do don't settle to your second best um i don't know about you vance but for me when i do something i can't sleep when when you know that what you have done that morning was it oh, that wasn't as good as i expected and you keep tweaking it it's not about the money but it's just more on the satisfaction that after you completed the job you know I, I i did my best in that one do you do you feel the same way too yeah of course <clears throat> i mean it's a i think i have to be personally satisfied with my work uh mm -hmm. personally satisfied so that i can feel like yeah i like that i like it <clears throat> i'm excited about it and I hope they are too. I can't guarantee that they will be, but I, I mm -hmm. at least want to be excited about it. So as long as I got that going, maybe the client won't like it and they'll make me change it to something that they do, they like, but I don't like. Sometimes that can be a, uh, I mean, working with people that you like and have built a reputation with, that, that doesn't happen as much, but perhaps somebody new has a different aesthetic than you do. You know, mm -hmm. like certain kind of colors or whatever. But yeah, that's kind of the first stage, though, is the, my own personal satisfaction. Like my own, my own bar is met. You know, do, do I feel like this is something that uh, I'm excited about? Right. Plus, it's it's what keeps me working on this, the same piece, right? If you're excited about it, then you can uh, gives you energy to complete it because you kind of want to get into certain areas and uh like on a on a, the actual art piece you know you open up these mm -hmm. little avenues right you leave something a little yeah. bit ambiguous and you're like i'm gonna get to that I, and i'm kind of leaving it for myself I, I like that yeah i think i've always worked a little bit more on the uh discovery side of art rather than the planning mm -hmm. right i think you're kind of the yeah, same I, I think you're it's intuitive right you put down shapes and just things that feel everything's from the gut <clears throat> as you're yeah. kind of feeling it out and you're kind of balancing that all with perspective and lighting and you know the yeah the craft side of it but the there's the gut side of it and i i'm i'm always leaving myself space to explore like, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to um, completely close the door on something. Like, once you put the final little rendering touch on something, that's done. And I have to move on. But right. there's, I'm, I think I'm reluctant sometimes to do that just too too early. Until I, I know. Really, yeah, until you really get that feeling like, yeah, 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 this is it. You know, do you do, you do that? Um, you, do you rest too when you, when you, when you think you finish something? Um, because for me, when I completed a task, I said, okay, that's done then, but I wouldn't just submit it right away. Um, I would, um, give it a few moments. Um, maybe I would do something else for the meantime. I would, you know, grab some coffee, watch, you know, just watch something else, uh, or do something else, uh, go outside. Then when you come back to it, then you realize, oh, I shouldn't have done this. You know, I should have. Now it's almost like catching some of the, some of the um, the nuances that I may have missed um, during the time I was working on it, and it and it's because you know when when we're looking at things over and over again, it it, it gets um, what do you say it saturating. Um, so what? For me, most of the time, what I thought was, oh, this looks cool. Actually, it's like, oh, why did I do this one? So I still make some uh, necessary changes that probably I have, I didn't see 
um, during the time that I thought that I was done, then I could make those changes and kind of balance it out. Then that's, you know, after that, I think that's the only time that I would be confident to, okay, this is, this is what I wanted to do. So there's always that moment when I have to look at it with a fresh eye, uh, always, you know, so I don't trust myself too much that, you know, okay, I'm done that. Um, yeah, it's, it's almost like I'm giving myself that, that, quality control time to uh, give it a moment yeah. uh, that things sink in and, and see uh, if, if that's already if it's really completely done so I don't know if that makes sense um, I'm babbling here already as I no can you repeat that <laughs> <laughs> can you repeat that in Tagalog <laughs> yes yeah, say it in Tagalog how do you Tagalog. say that? Tagala? Tagalog. 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 L-O-G. Tagalog. 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 Yeah, that's my dialect. Which the uh, Tagalog is, uh, Philippines has so many dialects. We have 113 dialects out of 7,700 islands. Can you uh, so, understand most of them? Are they similar? Or are they totally different? So if they came from the similar region uh, or towns that are closely adjacent to one another, they could, some of the words may be the same. Uh, just like also in any other country, uh, two countries side by side, you know. They, but, um, but no, I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to understand another person's dialect. Oh. I can only speak mine and uh, in English. A little bit and some some just by words I, I could catch the words uh, but uh, but yeah for the most part um, no I can understand um, the other dialects but it has some kind of a Spanish a Spanish uh, island sort of fusion right what's the original filipino language uh, there's a lot of tribal languages um so those we're, are already we're malay right? yeah we're malay uh so it means uh from that you can tell that we descended from in the basically that the kind of tribe you know from malaysia and from the inlands mm -hmm. and um so we're considered malay that's our I guess that's our um, species. <laughs> um, so those are everything is is tribal uh, language, and uh, so when the Spaniards um, conquered us, um, we started incorporating Spanish language. Uh, so we have uh, the, the the Tagalog. My dialect is composed of Spanish words, but the conjugation actually is not the same as uh, it's not a Latin based conjugation, just like, you know, when you study French, Italian, Spanish, uh, they're all Latin based um, conjugation or how do you. Um, I don't know. I was never good at languages. You know, whatever that call, you know, you call that. But anyway, um, so yeah, so it's it's actually a hard language to learn. That's what they always say. I mean, even for me, I mean, if I really look at it in a perspective where in um, you know, I want to learn Tagalog, um, it, it it is hard. And uh, it's 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 like actually English American English is hard too. We have a lot of rules, and there's tons of exceptions to the rules, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and, and that goes also, um, I believe, in, in my language, uh, in my dialect. You know, there's a lot of languages. There's a lot of uh, rules in that one. Then there's also a bunch of breaking those rules, which... Should we check our chat here? 
Oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, you know, what was the most challenging thing you've ever had to surpass? That's on mine. I don't know. Do you have any in, other question on yours, fans? No. I think there's only we have four on our stream. Hey, Thomas is on ours. What's up, Thomas? Oh, Thomas uh, logged in on yours. Yeah, likes me better. Yes, yeah, man. He woke up early today. Probably going to Costco. <laughs> Maybe he's in line at Costco while watching <laughs> us, right? <laughs> That'd be good, yeah. The Costco live feed. As you go, get your toilet paper and your Clorox wipes. Watch art being made. Do you always start, is that pretty, on my screen, yours is pretty grayscale? I see a little color, a little bit of a purpley greenish. Am I seeing oh, the colors right? Yeah. I'm trying to keep it muted um, because I could always i'm thinking of keeping it dark because i i can see on your um on your gorilla that you have those those are pretty much those are highlights right on the back or is that part of the skin part of their uh, are they really light color really light skin <clears throat> yeah kind of so I'm looking at that. that I'm, I'm trying to capitalize on that. So I'm trying to keep mine muted, just like yours. And I want that blue to pop in the jungle. But So that's why I added some blues in there. So I'm trying to mix on that portion. And I mean, you can tell that this is the stage for him. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm reserving that spot where he's going to sit on or stand on mm -hmm. but i want it i want him to pop uh but pop maybe i'll change his perspective a little bit should i be looking up a little bit more at him he's put put up on that perch i could do that oh, i like i like the bend on on the head actually when he turned his head a little bit yeah um i like that um even though his his eye level that that gave the up upshot feel, but I can hide a little bit of um, oh, there you go. I like that. Uh, grow. <laughs> he's, actually, he looks like he's breathing. <gasps> oh. <laughs> uh, but I want my jungle as kind of as cool as your creature. So we have twenty more minutes to go. Twenty minutes. I'm getting twenty me. minutes, man, till deadline. Okay. Then our, our director's coming. <laughs> oh, do you want to talk about your? Might as well plug your class. Oh the yeah, mentorship. so the mentorship class, guys. It's um, I got two back up reason for that is um, I guess they didn't foresee that they have still production going on. So I have two seats open that open up. So uh, my class, if you guys don't know about it, it's a mentorship class and this is probably the only time I'm going to offer an online thing this year. Um, again, basic, I'm basing it off from my production schedule through the year. Um, of course, nowadays you cannot plan anymore. Things are happening, changes in production, cancellation of production. Things are happening so fast that nobody can really plan for it. But anyway, if you guys are thinking of, uh, um, you know, it's a nine week mentorship. Uh, all you see here on our demo are just, I would say, the icing on the mentorship. I'm not going to teach much on your skills and how to paint, but more on why paint, why the reason why you paint, why you paint things, how to, uh, the class deals a lot about, of course, you know, the skills, how you develop the skills to paint, but that's just secondary. It's more of the thinking side. Um, so anyway, uh, you go to, um, you can go to my website, armansurano.com and you guys can see 
uh, the application, you have to apply first. It's and the reason for that it's an advanced class. Um, I don't teach fundamentals. Uh, I'm expecting that when you apply, that you already knew the fundamentals. So it's it's an advanced class, um, and I have to approve. You have to show me your portfolio first before I can approve you um, to be in the class. So so yeah. So that's it. Uh, thanks for reminding me, Vance, about it. You want to plug your school yeah, also? Just, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I still got to uh, like uh, broadcast it, but I mean, I think I can put the link. It'll be brainstorm, but it'll be totally online. Make Thomas happy. Online boot camp. Mm-hmm. Starting in late, um, oh, that's not the right one. Okay. Learn. There it is. All right. I'll copy the link inside of our chat. Link to, I think it's in going to be in June. And I just opened it up. That one's on mine. Online class here. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be doing it with Marshall again. I'm going to be doing a five week boot camp on how to design uh, mythical, mystical creatures. So, oh. uh, which will be fun. So, we'll yeah. get a little bit into. I think we're going to do one night talking about environment, talking about how environment can influence, you know, what a creature can look like, whether that thing's in the water, <gasps> and, you know. Oh, so we're giving value to the environment. <laughs> <laughs> I love environments. I know, sometimes we'll have to do this again where we flip the tables, or you do the character, I'll do the environment. You know what? That might be interesting. Thanks for saying that. I, I'm thinking, what more? You know, what more variation I can do in this one? That's actually cool. You should do it. I like doing environment. Oh yeah. It's a whole different. I mean, I kind of treat it the same way. I'll think about it like a. Um. Sorry, I'm getting caught up in my mark making. You ever do that? Everything has to go, hit one edge. Everything goes quiet. Um, but yeah, I'll think sometimes of environment, just like I think of a character. You know, where is the thing facing? Is it in the light, not the light? Almost like portraiture. Good way yeah. to think of environment. How will I light no, this I mean, And that's true. That's how, that's, how I, um, that's how I treat it. I mean, the, the environment has to be a character also. Um, and uh, I mean, it supports the character, but it has to have its own personality. That, of course, it has to support the character or contrast the character, whatever the story that you're trying to tell. And that's basically what um, I'd like to teach on always because people, you know, artists, they, they would just, oh, cool, you know, it's always the cool factor, you know, when, when you go to, when you go online, you always see cool really cool amazing um concept art where in it's always the big castle we we love big castles right you know mm -hmm. big castles and always. with the toy with the guy with the spear and, <laughs> and the horse <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like the norm <laughs> but they never do that when when you actually go in animation actual work they're gonna have you draw can you draw me a um can you paint a, a bedroom or a, uh, a a kitchen for a widower okay <laughs> I, never, I never learned that in class uh, but that's the reality you know that there are other most of the time it's it you go down in that level where it, it's very particular to the story right. and you don't always get to draw the big vista shots that's only like what 
of the shots in the film unless it's just an inspirational painting but most of the time when you go into production there's more to production that sometimes we never really realize and i've seen that in my students man their portfolio they got these amazing vista shots you know in their portfolio so i approve them in class then i ask them can you draw me a bathroom of of a woman who whose husband just died recently and say uh we're not gonna do a castle and a guy on a horse <laughs> i said you guys yeah. done that <laughs> let's go on the real thing now so anyway well sorry. that's next week's theme will be bathrooms yeah you know i was doing a demo mm. one time uh, at ctn actually a ctn um and i challenged the students we're gonna draw a bathroom a toilet in fact and I gave them a theme, something or a story. And yeah, and I asked them, any ideas? Give me some ideas of what you think. And it's so hard because they were not trained that way because they always trained to do the big, massively scaled stuff. Hmm. And um, yeah, so anyway, I don't know why I get into that. So that was just my spiel for my class don't give away too much man but you know what um, just to give everybody an idea uh, my son uh, took Vance's and Marshall's class guys mm. and he enjoyed it my son Luke and uh, I, I didn't tell you Vance but sometimes I would sit in and I was mm. there I was um, just pick over the shoulders uh, looks shoulders and and it's Marshall and um, Vance's class guys are fantastic. You know, these guys are funny. <laughs> Marshall's great. No, you. I'm. Yeah, you guys really work together. <laughs> huh? <clears throat> I said Marshall's great. I'm not as great. I think I, I'll do a lot of the demos. I'll do some talking and stuff. But um, Marshall is such oh, an articulate amazing, guy man. about art. He just yeah. he's who I learned from back in Fullerton College when I was 19 I took his classes and now teaching with him my daughter's learning from him your son yeah just uh he's got a really good way of simplifying it makes me think of uh I don't know if you know Julia Childs she was a famous American TV chef but mm -hmm. said that she uh she traveled to France she wanted to learn yeah. French cooking and so uh, she ended up writing a book about French cooking, but she's, it, it's always been said about her that she demystified French cooking. It was always this, like, magic, whatever they were doing there. Nobody understood it. But she went there, and then she just broke it down real simply for, like, the home cook. Yeah. I think that's what Marshall does. He kind of takes these art concepts, and he makes them simple to understand. He doesn't, yeah. try, to, he doesn't try to make it complicated. Sometimes we get into this sort of artsy fartsy talk you know but you know um it's good to just find the practical thing because you know there is a part of what we do it's uh hard to explain right because you're kind of yeah then you're kind of doing it from the gut so it's not like you're there's a real organized thought behind it it's a mm -hmm. it's a feeling it's a gut like why'd you do that why'd you put that mark there i don't know it felt right. good you know that felt right so, and that's true. I mean, not everything in art uh, can be explained, guys. Um, th that's why sometimes it bugs me when someone tried to explain something that's so intuitive and, and try to put words into that. Um, you can't, you know, um, because it's it's the person's perception, you know, the person uh, or the artist felt it. And... Uh, and sometimes those feelings don't translate into words. Um, yeah. So when, when I always respect an artist when when the artist would recognize that when they would say, I don't know why I did this, but I just felt like doing it because it feels right. And that's it. I mean, once I think you get to that level, then thing you what you're doing, it, it becomes a second nature in the person, on the artist. And uh, it, it's so natural with the person now that not everything can be measured. And I think that's what, when we were 
younger, I mean, my, including myself, when I was younger, I always want things, I want to measure it. I want to measure something so I can boil it down into a formula, then I can understand it if it's a formula. You yeah. can't. Yeah, you can't do that. Um, yeah, it's like programmatically mm -hmm. doing art, you know, if I plug in yeah. these variables, doop, 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 mm -hmm. doop, out the parps out good art. Yeah. I, there's something to it. There is an academic side to it, but there is a, I think that's what makes something art it makes it uh, it's the blending of both the academic the the emotional the spiritual if you can get all that going in your piece then you've, you've put it all together yeah yep it's not a lot different than any other area in our life relationships mm -hmm. or you know yeah there's practical yeah. things you can do with somebody consciously if you want to build relationship, you'll spend time with them. You go on dates, you'll, you know, but mm -hmm. it's not like you put that into a program. I have allocated yeah. five, seven minutes to talk with you. Let's talk and build yeah. relationship. Can't, can't really do that. It's not going to happen. No. no, there's no such thing as uh, quality time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think if you really want to have a quality time, it's, it's actually quantity time. So the quality time in, in terms of uh, relationship or art, it's, it means you have to spend time doing it, you know. Um, like in a person, you cannot say, okay, I'm you know, like what you said. I mean, you said it really well. Uh, I'm going to spend five minutes, but quality time with you. What, what is quality time in five minutes? I don't, I don't get that. Um, so quality time means... Um, always means quantity time as well we're almost done here um yeah. i think I'm, I'm ready to plug in uh le gorilla are you just going to do a screenshot should i uh, uh make you know what um yeah i can do a screenshot and then uh, we can you... fuse them together the high resolution files i'll do another i'm gonna do another sticker thing but we could do a little print put it together yeah for your print i mean it's okay for mine i think it's okay uh for it to be not too high because i'm gonna have him stand on that um oop, on that uh branch man this looks so cool i love it, love it. hey he made it over he did. He jumped. <laughs> Maybe there was a vortex <laughs> in the jungle, in the mighty jungle. Uh, I did the song again. Oh, there's, you know, that there's a documentary on Netflix about that song. You know, that song in the jungle, the mighty jungle. Yeah. The lion sleeps tonight. It was actually recorded. I think someone has, uh, has a, has the right for it or something. I can remember. But um, so when I, I believe when Disney used it um, for Lion King, they had to do something or they had to settle that one. I don't know. I can't remember. But there's a, there's a, a, a really interesting uh, documentary in it, maybe Netflix or Amazon. Um, anyway, so can you see it, Vance? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Man, this looks so cool. Hold on, hold on. I mean, I'm so. I may have. Do you mind if I? I I'm now contemplating. Maybe I should darken him a little bit, but I don't want to touch a drawing. I mean, it's no. Do it. Again, do whatever. You, go with your gut. It feels very sacrilegious to. No, yeah. I'm still working on him, so I'll probably to manipulate the band's uh, oh, drawing. Hold on, to get some blues. I'm gonna. Some opposite to blue. What's the opposite of blue? Take like an orange. Orange, right? Red orange. Uh, yeah, yellowy orange. Almost like a terracotta, soily orange, you know. <laughs> soily. <laughs> yeah, some soil. But I, I like that pink behind him. I don't want to. Okay, yeah. It fits in there, huh? Look at that. Mess that. Did that make a good print? So I'm gonna have this bands of you reddish just to balance it. Hold on. 
stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to watch. What? Then, so let me take this too. Then, go. then this. That, whatever that. I love that thing. But maybe I'll grab your yellow. So that would jive. So I, I, I want to keep that pinkish peach, whatever that color is. Uh, that is mm -hmm. that is the million dollar highlight that <laughs> yeah uh, of course the good old color dodge <laughs> mm -hmm. leave it out it oh. looks good I'm gonna look through some of these questions while you while you create the final image uh, I'm sure we answer that one No questions. Just want to say thanks. Oh, you're welcome, Patrick. Philippa says you met you. Patrick actually, Vance, when you, when Astilla, Astilla, yeah, when we were in Manila, he's he's hmm. one of the faculty at the school. Remember the school that sponsored us, um, yeah. and he's been a you know, good friend and partner in uh, Icon Manila, which uh, we don't know yet if we're going to still continue on with Icon Manila for this year, for obvious reasons. No. Um, when would it be? It's supposed to be September. It's always two weeks after Lightbox. So uh, I, I want to make sure that it, it doesn't interfere with Bobby's. And, and we talk about it. Bobby's a supporter also of Icon Manila. Um, so I want to make sure that we don't um, kind of fall in, in the same uh, weekend. So we coordinate that. Hey, someone's asking about Yam Yao. Hello, Yam. Yam Yao. Hey, Armand. Yam. How do you feel about the live action Milan film? Oh, uh, I like the trailers. Um, I haven't, of course, I think the only people who have seen the movie are the ones who were invited to its <laughs> premiere. And uh, uh, our good friend Tony Bancroft actually went. And I was just talking to him about it a, a few days ago. And and he, he loved it, he said. Um, <laughs> I mean, being the one who, who actually worked on the film, for him to say that, so I take it as a compliment for the film. I mean, so so for me, what I what I've seen so far on trailers, I I like it, you know. So I just I, I just hope that um, I don't know that I see it soon, sooner. Um, uh, but for what I've seen, actually, what I for what I've seen on the later, the later, um, uh, the later trailers, uh, I like. <laughs> At the first few teaser trailers, it, it kind of like, oh, what you know, did, did, I, I can decipher, you know, the feel. But on the later ones, yeah, it actually makes sense. Um, so yeah, I, I like it. Um, I still, I'm, I'm excited to see it, you know. Um, and I, I, I don't mind having no mushu. I think for some people that was a, there, you know, I was a disappointment. Say, like, ah, Mulan with no mushu. Yeah, that's uh, a that's but, a deal breaker for me. I can't. Uh, it? So I won't not, support uh, it now. Oh. Without Eddie Murphy, I don't <laughs> want to watch it. It's not authentic now. Uh, you mean the, without donkey? <laughs> Gumby? <laughs> Gumby. Remember when he did his Gumby on Saturday Night Live? <laughs> yeah. It's good. He's a funny guy. Funny guy. That's looking so, cool. This branch here, it's... Uh, I like it. I like the shapes. Kissing. Maybe if I move here. Oh, look at that. 
just like move that the 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 nose of your creature mm-hmm. so the million dollar for me on your drawing that what makes it so fantastic the highlight of the bag i mean of course everything's amazing and that's very strong stub nose um stubby nose so whatever you so whatever the uh, yeah is. I had to wait 20 seconds before I saw your move. Oh, yeah. I'm reacting. Wait for it. Wait for it. (laughs) Yeah, we'll get this down. I think if we get, can do the dual screen, your your setup looks good. Let the screen side by side and our faces down below. Mine doesn't look like that. I can't do that on my side for and then the resolution. We got to find a way to broadcast. Yeah. Cuz it is when I look at your Photoshop, I can't everything is pixely like the, all the texts and icons and Mhm. We should be able to get that razor sharp though, I would think. Uh yeah, I, I mean it's okay. Um, we're doing the best, but we'll we'll get there. We'll become experts in this someday. Man, I'm cool. happy with this one. Yeah. Ooh, look that's, at that. Oh, that's cool. That's, I'd, I'd watch that movie. Sell this on. Uh, you know what? Let me balance a little bit. Um, let me. I think we do, do a balance. print. We're gonna do a print of this one. That's cool. That's a cool so desktop do backdrop. A, I could see I all these the icons thing, on top of it. So nice. Icon, and sell it on in Icon Manila. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so bad. Oh, Hold on. Let me... oh, hey, I bought a. Uh, I bought this book. You'd like this book. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. This Mobius book. Is it in reverse? Oh, no. I lost you. Hey. Hey, something happened. I know. Uh, it's still uh, streaming. Yep. The Zoom. Whoa. Zoomed out. Zoom zoomed out. I heard that they, they've gotten so overloaded. <laughs> they weren't ready for it, that people are having Zoom problems. So my OB, I can't see my OBS. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Um, So what happened there? Uh, Thanks a lot, Sam. So I lost you, Vance. Um, So you are on my... Oh. You have to share again your screen. But mine is still still going on this end. Share screen. Then I think one should do that. It would be fine. Okay, that's you got it. Uh, yeah, uh, but we are now frozen on my. We'll see. Oh, wait, wait. As long as they can see the artwork, right? Yeah. Oh, weird. I know. Did your stream? Uh, no, we, we. I lost the feed on our. Okay, I'll make it over here. There we go. I think it's. But our sure. our video stopped. Yep. Yeah, um, let me check on that one. Zoom. Ooh. Okay, there you go. I think we're back. There you go, we're back. Um, all right, so this is the, I'm finishing it off. There we go. So we can move on with the day. Uh, <clears throat> this is our cleaning for us today. Looks cool. I'm just trying to do some, oh, thank you, man. I mean, this. it's an amazing, 
Where's the studio? Yeah, the stream is just, uh, how weird. Then, uh, our pictures got, mind? um, discombobulated on your stream. We're oh. it's fine. I mean, you can see your, the picture big. We're kind of cropped out, moved to the lower left. Might be on your OBS. If you resize the screen, oh, it might have yes. affected it, but keep going. I think we're about done oh, here. Oh, anyway. okay. Yeah. Sorry. 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 I know what happened. I should put in full screen there you go and this one i don't know what happened to this go ahead and make your maybe just even just putting your screen nice and big would be nice to oh, end on i fix it like drag Memorial down drag down your zoom window so it's uh we can just see your desktop that'd look cool i'm finishing up your I'm just adding a few nice, I'm just adding a glow underneath yours for that height. And on the, there you go. Bounce it. Yes. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> Let me uh, take a, no, I'm, the last thing I'm, I'm going to do is to do a color balance. Mm-hmm. And there are different ways I do this. I could I do the cheapest way, which is put a color balance. I would gonna I'm going to add some blues and see if that jives. And when I'm doing this, guys, I'm looking at the navigator. Uh, I added more cyan and more blue and possibly a little bit of magenta to balance the all up and uh, and and the yellows and the greens will stay on especially the pink on top and um use the yellows i'm less i'm less magenta uh, sorry i'm letting the cyan but i increased the blue since it's very the place is kind of dark anyway so I'm, once I do that, I'm losing the green, which is fine because it's sometimes when it gets too greeny, it becomes, for me, it becomes kind of sour and lemony. <laughs> I'd rather, <laughs> I taste the color. <laughs> I know. And this Good is the fault. time yeah, that we punch it up with, with uh, contrast and boom. And the last step, this is my last thing is I do, an overlay and whatever color that is that's hitting him maybe what's your favorite color bands <laughs> my favorite color <laughs> pink i love pink yeah always let's try pink <laughs> it's just a dash of pink That is so cool. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me stand up. Let's see it. Yeah. I like you it. See it? Yeah. I think oh, it's cool. still lags on you? Looks good. There you go. Man, this is improving. Do you like the pink or should I just leave it like this with the green? Maybe uh, just. I don't know. I can't. It's such a subtle. Oh, oh yeah, and I gotta wait. <laughs> oh, you did a little light ray thing. Yeah, it is. Uh, I kind of like that... it because it makes it kind of alien. It's a little more alieny. I don't know. It does okay, something though to that blue but on his head? I think though, huh? I just did it because the bound slice of the yellow got eaten by that overlay. Let me mm -hmm. just do one more. One, two, three, go. So cool. Okay, now I'm done. I don't want to overthink it. All right. Cool, Arman. Cool. And thank you so much for the opportunity. This is this is amazing. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. So, well, thanks again, Vance. Thank you, everyone um, who's online. Any any parting words, Vance? Before we parting words? No, that was fun. We'll do this again. Course. Try to do it. Uh weekly monthly whenever whenever we have time to do it it's kind of yeah. fun we'll get better at it each time 
Not bad cool. for Art Coop too. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. All right, guys. Thank you so much. All right, for everybody. Watching, thank you, Vance, man. I appreciate you. Uh, stay in touch, man. All right. We'll figure this tech the technicalities out soon. Yeah. All right, All guys. Right. So long. Bye. See you guys. Be safe.